have some modifications to work with in Supta Padangustasana. The first one is to keep your bottom leg bent. So when you're lying on your back in Supta Padangustasana, you can keep your left leg bent as you bring your right knee up and straighten your right leg. For many folks, just taking the bottom leg out of the equation gives some support to the back as well as some access to the stretch along the back of your leg. Whereas insisting that this leg stay down many times, it's just harder to get your foot. This is a great go-to strategy for those times when you're practicing this posture and you don't have a prop handy, or perhaps you're teaching this posture in a situation without props, which leads me to the next one. If you do have props and they're handy, then a great way to support yourself in this pose is to add a strap around the ball of your foot. I'm a fan of taking both straps in one hand and reaching as far up towards your foot as you can so that when you use a prop, it's kind of not changing the dynamics of the pose so much. It's coming, uh, bringing you as close into the shape of the pose as possible while giving you the assistance that you need. When you take your leg out to your side, that will also work with your leg bent as you bring the opposite leg down. The tendency with the leg bent will be to for your opposite hip to lift up. So make sure you keep that heavy and create an internal twist to keep your opposite leg as anchored as possible. Again, your strap will work when you go out to the side as well. For those of you want a little bit more intensity in the pose, once you've got your leg out to the side, you can move your bottom leg six inches to the side. That will increase the distance between your two feet and deepen the stretch. Now, you can also use that as a tool. Separate your foot wide for a moment Firm your legs, keep them strong as you stretch them. Then bring your bottom leg back to the midline and many times your opposite leg will lower down. You can see it on this side maybe more clearly. Here I've got strong legs and I'm going out to the side. Then I'll move my bottom leg further to the side. Keeping my legs strong and firm, I hold and breathe. Then return your bottom leg to the original starting point and your opposite leg many times will release. The other great way to work on this pose is to put your bottom foot against a wall or a wall. <laughs> Sometimes a piece of furniture can work nicely too. So here I'll show you on my back bender what I mean. I've got a nice little purchase there where I can put both feet on it. And when I set this up, I take a moment to lift your hips and draw the flesh of your buttocks towards your heels. So then when you straighten your legs and push against the wall or your furniture, the sticky mat will kind of grip the flesh of your buttocks, draw it under some and create some length to your lumbar spine. Then keeping your foot firm against the wall or your piece of furniture, Supta Padangustasana. And what that does is bring a lot of attention to the bottom leg. This is one of those poses where their top leg it seems like it's doing all the work, but there's so much happening in the bottom leg and so much awareness that we can bring to the bottom leg as a point of stability while a top leg has such movement. Another way to work while one foot is anchored and we've got that chain closed is to elevate your pelvis to increase the extension on your bottom hip. And by so doing, will increase the demand of the top leg that's in flexion. The block would go right where your sacrum joins your tailbone, not on your sacrum for this one. We want to be higher up than a lot of people think for this one. So I want to be close up to get my feet solidly placed against the wall or the prop. And I want my sacrum right where the tip, bottom tip of the sacrum 
joins the tailbone. It's called the sacrococcygeal junction. And if you make a line right along that place, it becomes like the midline or like the equator of the buttocks, if you will. That's also very high up where the thighs come up into the hip socket, so you're getting a nice full hip extension. And it does something really quite different than just putting the block higher up on the sacrum. In fact, when I have the block on my sacrum, it hurts my low back, whereas the placement of the block lower clears it. Then you go about Supta Padangustasana with your hips elevated. And even though uh, many of us can grab our big toe <laughs> on the floor, it's significantly harder with the height of the hips and you might enjoy a strap at that point. You can again use the adjustable nature of the blocks <laughs> to elevate your hips increasingly more significantly. And if you're quite open along the front of your thighs, and perhaps if you're prepping your back bend practice, you can use the highest height. But it's a pretty big situation. <laughs> okay. Those are some ideas to work with and to create some variety. This is one of my very favorite postures, and there's lots of good ways to work with it. And there's so many poses on the syllabus of poses that Suptapada Gustasana can teach us. It's got so much in common with our standing poses and our arm balances, and it's wonderful preparation for all of the seated four bends to get some opening and movement in the hips. All right. Have fun. Namaste.